It's another plumbing component. Why? Because I really like clever designs, and this is one of the cleverest designs I've seen of something like this. So when you think of a toilet cistern fill valve, you tend to think of the older ones with the ball cock and the valve that basically speaking, as it pivots up, it pushes a little rubber disc against a water inlet, and that is it. Makes a lot of hissing noises, and as it fills up, it just gets slower and ends up with that just continuous dribbling and dripping at the end. This doesn't do that. It also has so many other features. So let me show you those features right now. So you choose what size of pipe connector you want, and these actually have a little filter. The filter itself is quite clever. It's used to reduce the flow rate of water, and I'll just try and hike this out. It's used to reduce the flow rate of water, in, and you can see it's been injection molded, but one side is smooth and not uh, perforated, but the other one is perforated. I'll zoom down a little bit so you can actually see this. It means that it's only been, when they've molded it, it's just been perforated in these two faces. But to travel through, the water can only get easily by going through that perforation and into this void to continue. It can't go straight up. Very clever. So uh, that goes in the bottom here. So you choose your pipe size, and I'll zoom back out of it. You choose your pipe size, the smaller size or the more standard uh, half inch size, and then you decide, do I want it to be coming in the side of the toilet system or from the bottom? If you want it from the side, you screw it into this side port, and uh, in doing so, it pushes a little plunger in and opens the water valve in there. Or, when you take it out again, there's that little plunger there that uh, stops it from coming out here when you use the other port. If you want to go in the base like so many do, you screw it in here. And once it's screwed in, that's you got your attachment. Now, the height of this bit here is important in the cistern because to avoid uh, siphoning backwards, it has to be above what they call the critical level. That's the overflow level of the water. So to adjust the height in the toilet cistern, you just turn this to unlock it, and it's telescopic. And I'm going to have to zoom out now for this because that is very telescopic. So you can adjust it to the desired height, uh, and it's got O-rings inside, and then it uh, just turns to lock again. Another version of this, the brass inlet version, has a little locking pin as well for that, that you have to pull the locking pin out, uh, move up to the height, and then push that back in again. Up at the top, we have the actual fill mechanism and the float. It's interesting to note that you can just freely rotate this around the top of the body without actually affecting its operation. And even if it goes against the side of the toilet cistern, it doesn't foul it, because if this was pressing hard against the side of the cistern, then that can still, the float can still go up and down inside it. There's other more in, uh, impressive features here. There's a little uh, valve in the bottom here, just a loose plastic valve with an air pocket in it. And as the water fills up, it pushes that valve closed. And that means that the water can only overflow and operate it once it reaches a certain height. And once it reaches the height of this float uh, cup, uh, this goes up very quickly. And I'll show you that. In fact, I'll show you that right now. A warning in advance, this is going to be video inside an active toilet cistern. If you don't like surging water, it's not very loud though, but if you don't like surging water, you may not want to see this next bit, but uh, you can skip over it. Let's take a look at that now. If you have a phobia about rushing water, now is the time to turn away. Okay, now we've got this scary surging water thing passed. I have to say, many people do not like surging water in tanks. I don't like surging water in tanks. I'm fine with something like a toilet cistern. See big industrial spaces with the huge black tanks and dark rooms surging with water. I do not like that at all. So once you've uh, got this in, you can actually adjust the height that it's going to actually fill up to 
by simply rotating this. If I rotate it this way, it winds it down, so it will the water the water will fill up to a lower level. And if you rotate it the other way, it winds it up, and you just set the desired water level that you want. Other things worthy of note about this little valve is that when you actually flush the toilet, this doesn't just go down straight away. As the water goes down, it uh, starts draining out this hole, so there is a delay before it goes down. And that means that it's not just spraying water into the toilet system while it's trying to flush. Very clever. They call it delayed fill. Okay, next feature. It's very serviceable. Uh, if I now uh, take this off, let me grab a pair of suitable grips here. Suitable grips. If you wonder about the sticky plaster, by the way, what is it? I mean, it's absolute Murphy's Law. What are the chances of this, that in the same week that I released a video saying this is for technical people, do you keep your nails short or long? I knew that MD would keep them short because uh, that's the safest thing. Well, I was holding a piece of metal down while I was using a milling disc and uh, the milling disc snagged the metal. I should have had it clamped down better and uh, came up with such percussive force that if my nails had been longer, they would have been off. It would have been bad. As it was, it took a bit of the nail off here and this one, uh, mm, yeah, not great, but that's what happens. My fault entirely, I didn't clamp it down properly. Uh, it also stopped with enough force, the disc, that it removed one of its uh, tungsten and carbide blade tips off the, the disc. Yes, not to worry. It's done. It's happened. Right, where was I? I was about to take this off. So I'm going to grip this by here, and I'm going to rotate it to unlock that. Am I rotating the right direction? I think I'm rotating in the right direction. Am I gripping the desired bit, or am I gripping the whole structure of the thing? This is where I make a mess of it. I will say that compared to the other simpler version, this one's a bit harder to do, but if you need to do maintenance, you can just turn that, a partial turn, and it gives access to the diaphragm. At this point in here, water would be spraying out here. This is this hole here is where the water comes in, and then it goes down around the outside ring. Not sure where, but it goes down the outside. That's why it also fills up very quietly, because the water's coming out the middle, and then it's actually going down below the level of the water to actually fill up. Very clever. But if we take a look at this, um, you can then clean the diaphragm if it's got a bit of calcium. Hey, let's zoom down this. Or you can remove it completely. This is probably the wrong tool for removing it. I'll probably end up damaging the diaphragm, but you can get spares. Oh, there it comes. So notice that when I pull it off, that there is this little pin stays put. This is quite a clever feature because... As the diaphragm moves up and down, it does move up and down in normal operation. That's self-cleaning. It basically wipes that surface that is a uh, water inlet area. Let's remove this. Here is the diaphragm with its little hard plastic insert. And there is the bit that stops the water. Basically speaking, when this is down, water can actually flow at the top, and it does drizzle drizzle down the outside of the unit when it's doing that. But when this uh, float goes up, it blocks this hole. Now, let me show you what actually happens there with the notepad. Move that out the way. The notepad. And focus onto that. So, in normal use, when the water's not flowing, the little rubber dome that's inside here, the bit that cantilevers up and down with the float, is pressing down. There's a, just that tiny little orifice there that the water would normally get out. So the water can't get out of it, and the water flowing in here goes through that a small hole in the diaphragm, and in doing so, this area here pressurizes, and it pushes that diaphragm down, and it stops the water flowing in. When you flush the toilet and the little float goes down and that opens up, now water can spray out here and it gets capped. There is a cap over here, so it just basically drizzles down the outside. It's not a huge quantity of water. But now because the pressure here is lower, this can now push the diaphragm up and the water flows around the outside and down to actually fill the tank. 
And as soon as it gets to the top and it comes down again, that repressurizes and pushes the diaphragm down. Very clever. Also clever that it's got that sort of self-cleaning system in it. Anything else worth mentioning about this? Oh, yes, there is this. Now, I don't think we use these in the UK. I think this is for the siphon toilets where it drizzles a little bit of water as it's filling into the... I mean, is there anything visible in there? I think there's probably a little port in there that would go down. Not sure. But this is kind of blocked. I guess they get the feeling that during manufacture, maybe they have versions for the siphon toilets where some of the water is diverted down into the bowl while the thing fills. And they probably just use a drill to drill into that. I'm not sure it would happen. I'm not going to drill into it because we don't need that facility here. But I get the feeling that if you did drill a small hole in there, it would go into the cavity inside that would let water actually trickle out there to actually bring the the uh, the siphon flush. I've only ever really come across those in America. And when I was young, in a, I came across them in the uh, Hunter Health Centre in East Kilbride. Um, and they scared the crap out of me because I was a kid and uh, the, suddenly the water looked like it was going to overflow in the toilet. Very strange. Um, but that's it. It's a very clever system. This just bayonet caps back on in your desired position and locks again. Um, and uh, you're ready to... Which, where does it go on? Mm, I'll screw this up, won't I? Yes, I will. Oh, actually, I should put the, the diaphragm back in before I do that. But anyway, that's it. Uh, it's a very clever design, especially the telescopic arrangement uh, that lets you put it up to different heights and then lock it. All very clever. Um, oh, and there's another little ring has come out here. Yes, I'll have to find out where that went. But there we have it. Uh, the Skylo... Uh, universal valve for side or bottom entry it's very quiet and as you've seen from filling up it, it is quiet and it stops very decisively at the end it's a very very clever design <laughs>